What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. So one of the few sellers at the deadline that was quite active was the Charlotte Hornets. They traded off a couple pieces this year like Tay Rozier, Gordon Hayward. Of course, they just bought out Kyle Lowry as well. And uh, to end off the trade or to end off, you know, the games after the trade deadline, they went 3-0. and Now, I think the biggest question for the Hornets going into the offseason is whether or not Miles Bridges will be re-signed because he is going to be free agent and decided not to want to be traded. So... Not really sure what's going to go on there once we get to the offseason with the Hornets and Miles Bridges. But other than that, I just wanted to come on here, rebuild the Charlotte Hornets based off where they are right now. And uh, I feel like they've done a pretty good job with their franchise. Brandon Miller ended up being a good pick. Uh, they sold some pieces off like they should have. Got a first round pick for Terry Rozier. So let's just go ahead and uh, get into this rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. Now, of course, this team isn't very good. They're 13 and 41 on the season. But one guy they did acquire in the uh, Gordon Hayward trade is Trey Mann. And I think he's done pretty solid since he's come over from Charlotte. Has been getting some minutes. I don't watch Hornets games like that, so I'm not going to pretend I do. But I feel like I've seen a couple posts about Trey Mann and how good he's been. Uh, Mark Williams uh, hurt at the moment, but he should be back soon. Lamella Ball, of course, has also been in and out of the lineup. Uh, but, you know, the rest of the season doesn't really matter. They got Grant Williams from the P.J. Washington trade. Not sure if he'll be a long-term piece here or not. Obviously, it wasn't very good for the Mavericks. But we're going to go ahead and celebrate the rest of the season, of course. And uh, we're just going to see how this team finishes out. So, of course, we're in the midst of the All-Star break right now. Tonight is the dunk contest and all that. So, should be a ton of fun. But let's go ahead and uh, rebuild the Hornets on a beautiful Saturday, shall we? Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that's available on mobile or desktop. The way Prize Picks works is you choose between two to six players, two players being three times your entry, all the way up to six players being 25 times your entry. Now, we know we don't have basketball, at least right now, but one thing Prize Picks is doing is they have a free square on Nikola Jokic on an NBA season, uh, our NBA season square. So if you want to go ahead and place an entry on the rest of the NBA season, Prize Picks has um, they have uh, 30 plus point games, 40 plus point games, 10 plus point games, 20 plus point games, double double, triple doubles. There's all kinds of stats to choose from here, just like there's all kinds of sports to choose from. Once the NBA is back, of course, uh, which they actually have some all star props on here if you're interested in that. But if you want to check out any of this on Price Picks, use code CROSSLOSE, match first positive dollar for dollar up to $100. Absolutely love Price Picks. I haven't used the Nicole Yoke Free Square yet, but trust me, I will. And the way I use price picks is DGF's optimizer and correlation. So, so basically what the optimizer does, it compares discrepancies across multiple sports books. For instance, uh, I don't know how to say his name, but it's Tizian, uh, over 26. Every other book has a 27, 20 and a half, 27, 26 and a half. So you're getting a discrepancy here at 26. So basically what price picks does, it pulls all these discrepancies across multiple sports books and it shows you the discrepancy. Really awesome app to find good plays with the click of a button, basically just by simply refreshing. But my favorite tool personally that DGF offers is the correlation tool. Uh, correlation is such a huge edge, had a great day on correlation, basically how it works. If you've been uh, putting in slips at volume since August 18th, you'd be up 814.5 units. Basically, um, they have actually also added an update where they uh, build out slips for you from the optimizer. Uh, but for instance, like on CS2, uh, basically, if the if the match is going to go more rounds, then the more kills that are possible. Same thing with NHL and NFL when it's here. There's no NHL slips on here, but uh, uh, these are just EV slips. But there's no NHL correlation slip. But just for example, I'll show you. Yesterday, really good day using the correlation tool. We had a 20x on Dabble straight from the correlation tool. Really close to one on price picks as well, but Clayton Keller couldn't get one more shot on goal. And same thing with um, CS2. Uh, we had another one straight from the correlation tool. So if you check out any of these tools, all links are down in the description below. It's made me a more profitable sports better. Other than that, let's get back to the rebuild. So of course, the end of the season really doesn't matter to us because we weren't very good. But uh, it would be cool to see like a mellow on here. But it probably didn't play enough games, to be honest. But let's take a look at, uh, did we finish in the play -in? No. I was going to say, there's no way, right? But you got to double check. So player stats, 27 from the mellow, 20 from Miles Bridges, 16 from Brandon Miller, 13 from Mark Williams, and 10 from Nick Richards. If I was a betting man, which of course you guys know I am, I would bet that Miles Bridges doesn't resign with the Hornets. Doesn't mean I'm not going to in this video, but I don't know. My gut feeling tells me he's going somewhere else. I don't know for sure, but it, it, that's just what my gut is telling me. We'll see. Uh, but James Harden wins the championship over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Our retirement is Udonis Howes and Al Horford. Uh, so no LeBron James I have to you know fix. But lottery, 
obviously big important stuff for this franchise we are projected pick number five from oh well of course it's going to the spurs or projected to be but our pick is protected would love nothing more than to get like number one or whatever so let's see if we could do that and get lucky so we are going to get number six damn we fell as far as i wouldn't want so drop to number six really sucks blazers get three kings um pistons at four and five spurs wizards at one and two all right so we fall out of the top five which really is unfortunate not great luck steve clifford just like i tell you guys every single time i need a new head coach in this first one our first year i usually just keep the coach that's here just because simply uh, the coaching pool this year isn't very good. Next year, it's like phenomenal. So we're going to wait till next year to fire Steve Clifford. If there is a reason to, if we make the playoffs next year, then maybe I got to keep him, right? So let's see if we got to, um, let's see what we're going to do this offseason with the sixth overall picks. We're going to resign, we're going to sign all these guys. Just kidding. We can't. So I'm going to fill out this coaching staff because this part's always not really my favorite part, but let's get to the draft. So jumping straight into the draft, curious to see how this is going to go. Number one goes Nikola Topic on the Senate or Topic. Sorry, I always say that wrong and people always just correct me in the comment section. But Alex R, Washington Wizards, good pick for them. Uh, Zachary Satcher goes to the Blazers. You got Cody Williams to the Kings. You got Detroit getting Ron Holland. So that's probably who I would have taken. Uh, but finally, it falls to us. So I think Montez Buzelis has to be the pick. I know Isaiah Collier would be a good pick as well. Uh, just consider we have LaMelo Ball, um, I think. And we might need a replacement for Miles Bridges as well. I do believe, well, Kobe Walter. So we have Brendan Miller. Kobe Walter wouldn't be a bad pick, bad pick either if we wanted to go with him. So I don't know. Do I want to go Kobe Walter or Montez Buzelis? Because right now we have LaMelo. We don't really have a starting shooting guard. And we might still restart Miles Bridges. I'll take Jacoby. I think his real name is Jacoby Walter, but it might just be Kobe Walter. I don't know. But let's go uh, later in the draft. And we have a second round pick. Tristan De Silva. Uh, Dalton Knight, Iguodala, um, Antonio Reeves, Deron Holmes. I'm going to take Deron Holmes. So that will be our draft. So we when it, we go with Kobe Walter. Montez Bezalis probably wouldn't have been a bad pick either. Uh, but I feel pretty solid about how the draft went for us. So just like that, Deron Holmes, Kobe Walter, welcome to Charlotte. Player options, Davis Bertans. Uh, I'm going to actually decline that. JT Thor, Mark Williams, we're accepting. Qualifying offers, Amari Bailey. Um, get extended. Why not? And then free agency leaky black is probably someone I probably should extend the offer to as well. Oh, well. So yeah, the big question is, do we resign miles bridges? I don't know. Like I, like I said, my gut tells me he's not resigning for whatever reason. I feel like he's going somewhere else. So I might let him do that, but part of me wants to just resign him. So Lamelo ball, Trey, man, Cody Martin, Kobe Walter. So we have our new starting guard next to Lamelo, which is going to be Kobe Walter. Seth Curry probably can just trade him off for a second round pick. I don't really see the reason of keeping him here. Cody Martin uh, could be the backup to uh, Brandon Miller, which we'll probably do right now. So Cody Martin uh, has had a pretty solid season with Charlotte as well. Uh, the other game I watched, um, I think it was like a week ago now, but Cody Martin was just going off. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that's normal, but Grant Williams could be could be our starting four if we do not bring back Miles Bridges and then Mark Williams and Nick Richards. But I think I will restart Miles Bridges just because I don't know. I, I don't know if he's coming back or not. My gut tells me he's not. But I'm going to re-sign him anyway. So Miles Bridges, we're going to re-sign and bring him back to Charlotte. Uh, and then we could figure out, is there anything else we need? So I don't think so. I think we're cool. Actually, the one thing I did want to do is I did want to tra trade Seth Curry off. Just because I feel like he could go to a contender. It'd probably be a lot better for him. Although, I know his dad played in Charlotte. So I guess that could make some sense. But Philadelphia reuniting with Seth Curry does feel right. So we're going to do that. So uh, Mellow Ball, Trey Mann, Kobe Walter, Nick Smith Jr., Brandon Miller, Cody Martin, uh, Grant Williams, Miles Bridges, and then Mark Williams, Nick Richards. I'm actually cool with this rotation. We're a very young rotation still, but I like it. I think uh, Brandon Miller and Lamelo Ball are going to keep progressing. Those guys are both back in the qualifying offer, but Miller being up to an 86 is awesome. Mark Williams, 83, Miles Bridges, 83, and Cody Martin down. He, we had him at a 79, but whatever. And then uh, Trey Mann up to a 77, which is really solid, so I'm happy about that. But let's get straight in to this next season, and let's see what we are about to look like i don't know if we'll be a play-in team next year that'd be awesome if we were i think we're definitely going to be getting closer and closer to that obviously we're you know that's really the goal that's what we're going to eventually try to do but i very i feel like i've barely done anything and this team could just make it it really could but we got to cut one person so we're going to cut um we're going to cut mitchich well, he's making now nah, i'm going to keep that contract We'll probably cut Amari Bailey, unfortunately. Sorry, Amari Bailey, but you gotta go. All right, power is gonna be 21st overall. Proficiency, three star pace and space. I feel like it can be three and a half somewhere, can't we? No, we cannot. Never mind. All right, so we're gonna leave pace and space. New rotation. Lamelo, 
Rookie Kobe Walter, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, Mark Wims, Cody Martin, Nick Richards, Trey Mann, and Grant Williams. Really, really solid team. Really like this. And then what is Kobe Walter's shot to see? It is, I want to push, uh, push Brandon Miller's up quite a bit as well. Kobe Walters is a 55 uh, out of the, you know, I want the Rook shooting a little bit. So we'll do something like this. And then I will see you guys at the end of year one. I don't plan on stopping at the deadline. I don't think there's any piece I'm like trying to sell off. The main thing here is just seeing if Kobe Walter can develop in anything. And then we should probably try to send like Nick Smith to the G League and like Deron Holmes to the G League just because that would probably be productive for them this year. So we'll do Nick Smith and Deron Holmes in the G League this year. And uh, we'll see how the season goes. So hopefully this team ends up surprising us. Maybe makes the plan. We'll see what happens. So year number two goes a lot better than I even anticipated. We'll look at that in a second. But MVP goes to Luka. Alex R, Rookie of the Year. Paulo, six man. Chet's defensive player. Also most improved. Jokic, clutch player. Kid, coach of the year. And Harrison is your executive. So I imagine we get Lamelo making an All-NBA team. I have to imagine he's here. Uh, yes, All-NBA third team. So I will show you why in just a second. But All-Defensive first team. An offensive second team. And then did Kobe Walter make an all-rookie first team? He did. Let's see what he did this year. 13 points. Pretty good efficiency as well. We'll absolutely take that. Love to see it in an all-rookie second team. Uh, but we ended up being the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, I said that we'd be probably like getting closer and closer to being a playing team. But we're a lot closer than I even expected. 25 for Lamelo, 21 for Brandon Miller. 17 for Miles Bridges. And then 13 for Kobe Walter. 12 and 11 for Mark Williams with one and a half blocks. 10 from Trey Mann. And 7 from Cody Martin. Really solid season, really successful season at that. And we get to add potentially Nick Smith and Ron Holmes into this rotation next year. Yeah, this team has definitely gone to come up. But let's go ahead and see if we can beat the Toronto Raptors in round one. James Harden, Buddy Hill, RJ Barnes, Jacob Berto quickly. Markel Fultz, Gogo Badadze, and Chris Boucher. Somebody current round against Toronto. Also another team that like retooled. And we are going to lose in seven. We blew a three to one lead. I think we had a three to one lead, didn't we? Uh, I don't know. We just blew a lead. So at first... I wasn't going to fire Steve Clifford because I was like, okay, this team did pretty good. But now that we blew a lead in the first round, uh, we're firing him. <laughs> I have a reason to fire him now. Ron's going to retire in Orlando. Very interesting. But yeah, I have a reason to fire Steve Clifford. Lottery, uh, our pick is going to the Spurs now. Uh, Miami's number one. Uh, that pick, or I think Cornets have like 2027 from Miami. It would be awesome if it was this year. But yeah, imagine we had Cooper flag to this equation. But no, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Our pick is headed to San Antonio. Uh, do we have a pick at all in this draft? I don't think we do. So we're not going to be drafting in this loaded draft class, apparently, in 2025. So that kind of sucks. Really unfortunate. But we didn't have any pieces to sell off for this draft. But we know we could fire Steve Clifford. Uh, you did a good job, Steve Clifford. But, I mean, we got to fire you. So Frank Vogel, Taylor Jenkins, Will Hardy. Any, any of these options would be great. I'll try Will Hardy. He signs it. So Will Hardy, um, really respectful coach in Utah. Obviously, we'll take him. And then we'll uh, sign... Freeman and we'll take that. All right, so we have a better coach in my mind and Steve Cl or you know from Steve Clifford to Will Hardy. Uh draft night just to double check, we had a couple second round picks, one from that uh St Seth Curry trade. I will sign whoever the CPU drafts if they're good. So Isaiah Evans and Colin Chandler. We'll go ahead and uh, draft both of them. Or sign both of them. Mitchish we're going to decline. I don't see a future for him anyway. So Brandon Miller, Mark Williams, Nick Smith, Ron Holmes, all options we're accepting. Uh, qualifying offers, Trey Mann. I do want to re-sign him. Been pretty solid for us. And then, uh, yeah. So I think the only thing we need to prioritize is Trey Mann. We could sign another good free agent, but kind of like how this core is clicking. So the main thing is let's re-sign Trey Mann to a nice three-year deal. So I have that going for us. And then is there anything else we want to do? We could sign another good player. But again, like I'm kind of just cool with how this team is developing. We just almost got out of the first round last year team should only get better um i think if the team stagnates this year then we probably need to make a long-term move uh but this year i'm cool with maybe just going to the deadline and seeing what our options are so player progression leaky black is back uh miles bridges is down kobe walters up and trey man is up so that's really solid uh nick smith's up to a 77 so he's going to join the rotation this year and drawn homes up to a 75 so all very very solid to see really love to see that so now grant williams becomes replaceable in the future with drawn homes developing uh, Nick Richards is going to stay. Mark Williams. Our center rotation is staying the same. I like both those guys. Uh, Miles Bridges. I could move on from him in the future. We'll see. Uh, Brandon Miller, Cody Martin. I like Cody Martin as the backup going forward, but McGowan's is definitely on his uh, heels. And then Nick Smith, Kobe Walter. I love that shooting guard rotation. Yeah, our guard rotation and our center rotation I'm so cool with. 
Uh, same thing with Brandon Miller, obviously. I think the one position I wouldn't mind replacing is the power forward just because I saw Miles Bridges regress rather than get better. So if there's a power forward we can eventually upgrade to, I definitely think we got to consider it. So let's go straight into this next season, though. Just curious to see how things go under Will Hardy. I want to see that first. And then if I do decide to stop the deadline to just push this team over the top and just get all aggressive, I will show you, which is definitely a possibility because I love how this team is developing and where we're at as a roster. So let's take a look at the season or what this is about to look like this season. So three star balance. So we still don't go up in proficiency, which sucks, but whatever. So the law or the mellow ball, Kobe Walter, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, Mark Williams. So again, our guard rotation is set. I'm cool with the guard rotation. The power forward or starting small forward, obviously we're keeping him. Power forward is probably the one position we're looking to replace if we do anything. Nick Smith Jr. not getting any minutes sucks really badly. What we could do is we could send him to the G League one more year. Same with Ron Holmes. And then these guys would be absolutely ready for next year. That's kind of where I see it. So I will see you guys at the end of this season or at the deadline. Just depends on how things are going. But I'm excited to see how things go under Will Hardy. So, so far, off to a 3 1 start, 4 uh, 2. Uh, four and three. All right. So we'll, we'll see. I'll see you guys potentially at the deadline or at the end of the season. So we are indeed stopped at the trade deadline as I am looking to knock this out of the park right here, right now. There's a couple options on the table. So we're going to see what those options are. So we're looking at team Intel. We're 29 and 21 second seed in the Eastern conference. I'm just trying to look, I'm just trying to upgrade this power forward spot while we can, before we have to resign a bunch of players, get someone under contract. There's two guys that I'm looking at and one of them makes sense. The other one uh, we'll see, maybe. So, first one, Will Hardy reunites with Laurie Markkinen. Uh, Laurie Markkinen just got extended, I think, because he is not expiring anymore. Let's see. Yeah, so he's no longer an expiring contract, but obviously would be a perfect fit at that power forward spot. Uh, we could re or we could get him. Will Hardy reunites with the player he just coached in Utah. So we could do that. Um, and then another good option that I kind of like is the Grizzlies with Jaron Jackson Jr., the Grizzlies are selling. They're 16 and 36. They just drafted Isaiah Collier. Don't really know where their franchise is going, but Jaron Jackson, of course, would be um, pretty amazing at that power forward spot. So we could either go Jaron Jackson or Market in here. I'm going to try Jaron Jackson Jr. first just because I don't get him all that often and there's an opportunity to get him. So well, let's see if we can make a trade with the Hornets. So it's going to include Miles Bridges, and then we're going to include um, like uh, Isaiah Evans, who we just drafted a 2026 first round pick and then let's say a 2028 first as well so let's say it's miles bridges isaiah evans and two first round picks for jaron jackson they agree just like that we got our upgrade at the power forward spot jaron jackson what a beautiful addition to this team we move him to the four he stays the same uh we can use a secondary position to be the center as well but boom love it that is our that is our home run addition getting jaron jackson jr is going to be a massive upgrade i believe over uh miles bridges so absolutely love that get a defensive player of the year. That's exactly what we needed. And it shows the mellow ball that we are still trying to make things happen. So marketing also would have made a ton of sense as well, just because of Will Hardy being here, but I'm absolutely okay with Jaron Jackson. So I'm going to go ahead somebody to the end of this year, second seed in the East. Let's see what Jaron Jackson coming to the table. If this is only going to increase from here as we've lost two games after the deadline, we've lost three games. So, so far Jaron Jackson, is not it, it takes a while to click right oh oh god okay this isn't going great all right okay can we win a game there we go can we win another one maybe yep all right so we should still be we should still be in the playoffs but we'll see what happens so another successful year too but the team definitely got worse after we traded for jaron jackson so not a positive sign hopefully that changes here lamella ball goes from all nba third to all nba second which is awesome offensive first team and all defensive second team jaron jackson makes it which is great uh, but we are in the playoffs as the fourth seed again. So the reason why I think we got worse is because obviously we were the second seed in the East. And we go out, we dropped to four. But as long as we can get out of like round one with 25, 24, 17, 15, man, Trey Man is being awesome. And I, I I said man before I said Trey Man. No pun intended there, but he is being, you know, he's great. Kobe Walter still loved that pick as well for us. So here goes nothing. Can we get out of round one to get the Magic, who of course have their own good roster? They have Jimmy Butler now. They kept, or they did not keep Franz Wagner. Instead, they went Jimmy Butler, and they have Isaiah Hardenstein as well. Somebody current round against the Orlando Magic, and we are going to beat them in six. I thought we were about to blow through a zero lead there, to be honest, but we get out of round one and on to round two, which is a great sign. Now the Cleveland Cavaliers, which we match up very well against them. Also, by the way, forgot to say this. Um, let's go to the Hornets. 
uh, or let's go to what I didn't show you guys. So, not send down, but uh, transaction. So, we did extend McGowan's, Martin, and Richards as well. So, after we made that trade, we also extended these three guys. So, I wanted to keep Cody Martin, Nick Richards. McGowan's, I was like, sure, why not? We'll keep him as well. All right, let's see. Can we beat Cleveland to get to these cars files? Would be absolutely amazing. And we are going to... We had a 2-0 lead at one point, but can we get back to having a 3-2 lead? If we beat them in Cleveland, we take them back to Charlotte. That could be a huge edge for us, but this is going to be a good back and forth game and they may take care of business. They do. We had it at one point there, but unfortunately we are going to lose. Now, can we come out here and win this one where it looks like we might be going home? We took a baby step forward once again. We went from round one loss to round two loss, so I'll take that. Nick Smith Jr., Ron Holm should be rotational players next year. Kate Cunningham went to the Miami Heat. Very interesting about Thunder won the championship. But yeah, this next year is where we go all in on winning a championship. So Pelicans won in Milwaukee. Absolutely insane. The Drew Holiday trade turns into a number one overall pick for the Pelicans. Uh, but staff signing. Uh, Will Hardy will keep, of course. Uh, Tyrone Corbin. So the only thing we need to grab is a wing whisper, and we are ready. So might have a draft pick. Actually, I think we don't because we traded, of course, to the Grizzlies. So... Uh, which worked out because we made the playoffs, so we're not too upset about it. Uh, is there a good wing whisperer here? We finally found one. James Posey, welcome to the team. Let's go straight to rookie signing, and uh, let's see what we got going on here. So we are going to have Bryce Mercer. I'm going to just move on from him. Uh, Chandler, I'll sign, and then qualifying offers. I imagine we have some important free agents. So Dron Holmes, Mark Williams. Yeah, and then Nick Smith Jr. Is he a free agent yet? He must not be, but Mark Williams wants a bag. Uh, it sucks, but we are going to go ahead and give him his bag. Uh, and then also we want to draw on Holmes back, but it's not giving him the ability to just resign him. But we keep Mark Williams on a nice little contract. Ron Holmes, I do want you back. I feel like you're going to be a rotational piece for us this year. So if you could come back, that'd be great. Where are you at? Strong Holmes, you were down here somewhere. There you are. Let's see. Does it let me just sign you? I'll give you a three-year deal to come back. And he should sign that. So Drawn Holmes... Should be ready to play this year, which I'm very excited about. So let's go to player progression and let's see what this is about to look like. Grant Williams is also some, someone we could trade here too. Uh, but I don't know if I need an upgrade anywhere. So Trey Mann, Nick Smith Jr., both up. Fantastic. That's great. So Trey Mann, 82. Uh, Nick Smith up to an 81. Uh, Kobe Walter did not move at all, which is a little disappointing, uh, but it's all good. And Dron Holmes did not move either. Damn. Okay, that sucks too. So Trey Mann, Lamelo, Nick Smith. Kobe Walter. Nick Smith may start this year. We'll see. Uh, Cody or Brandon Miller, Cody Martin, Bryce McGowans, Darren Jackson, Grant Williams, and then Nick Richard, Mark Williams. I guess if there's one position I'd want to upgrade, it's maybe the back of four spot. Not saying anything against Grant Williams. Uh, he's been decent for us, but if I can find a back of four that's better, I, I wouldn't mind going that route. I want to see if I can convince the Lakers to do a Grant Williams for Jared Vanderbilt swap. Uh, so we're going to come out here and offer like Colin Chandler on top of Grant Williams. They don't agree to that right away. Trying, I'm not going to throw a first round pick in here. That'd be kind of crazy. But Deron Holmes, I, I thought he'd get better, but he didn't. McGowan's I could throw in here as well. They don't have enough money for that. So I think I'm going to have to start including second round picks. Uh, so let's see what they say to this. They say no. I'll go a third second. They still say no. I really want to get this done. Is there anybody else I'm comfortable throwing in here? Deron Holmes, I don't really want to throw in here. Not throwing the Miami Heat pick in here. Mavericks pick, I don't want to throw in here as well. Let's just go all the way to four seconds. I'll be a psychopath. Why not? So three did not get it done. And can I get a fourth one in here? There we go. So they take four seconds for Vanderbilt. To take Grant Williams, which we get a backup for in Vanderbilt, which I'm pretty ecstatic about. I think he's going to be a little bit more what we needed than Grant Williams. So that is our big power forward upgrade off the bench. He is two overall upgrades. So I guess we will absolutely take that. But hopefully this is the year that this ends up being a championship. I have a good feeling about this, but we'll see. So taking a look at uh, the rotation, Packers going to line is 10th overall, three and a half balance. So we're still not moved up to like a four star, which I'm a little surprised by, but um, could we be four star seven seconds? No, we cannot. So LaMelo Ball, Nick Smith, Brandon Miller, Jaron Jackson, Mark Williams, Trey Mann, Kobe Walter, Jared Vanderbilt, and Nick Richards. And then Cody Martin's not getting minutes and neither is Bryce McGowan's. If we feel the need to stop the deadline, I will show you guys, but hopefully there's no need. Hopefully this team just dominates, but we'll see what happens. So here we are at the end of year number three. No awards for us. Would love to have seen like LaMelo make an NBA team or uh, MVP award. I've seen that a couple times, but he makes an NBA second team. So we'll take that. 
We end up as the first seed in the East. So yeah, things went very, very well for us this year. 25 for Brandon Miller, 23 and a half, 15, 14, 14, 11, 11, and then five, and then five. So here goes nothing. Milwaukee in round one. They got Damian Lord, Giannis still, but outside of that, they got like Jay Sean Tate, Johnny Davis, Marcus Smart in Milwaukee. I think Boston fans would throw up if they saw that. But we have Caleb Martin, so we get the Twins going up against each other. But hopefully, we don't lose Milwaukee in round one. And they are going to give us a run for their money, but we do beat them in six. And now we get the Brooklyn Nets. So Brooklyn, one of those other teams that uh, they got Franz Wagner, but he's coming off the bench, which is interesting. So yeah, one of those other teams I would hate losing to. Franz Wagner definitely changes this a little bit, but uh, hopefully we beat them. Somebody curve around, and we're going to sweep them. And now we get the Cavs. So this is the team that, of course, beat us last year. Garland Mitchell, Coro Mobley, Allen, Jalen Smith, Pokoshevsky, Grayson Allen, and Kevin McCuller. Game one goes to them. Game two, even it up. Game three, two to one. Can we go three to one? Yes. Can we beat them in five? Yes, we can. Let's go. We're in the finals. Okay. So Milwaukee's the only team that's given us a test so far. We get Dallas or Memphis. Part of me wants to see the Grizzlies just because we have Jaron Jackson and then Miles Bridges. So we made that trade. So let's see what happens. Um, or we're not some casting. Let's just go game by game. Dallas and okay, so we get the Mavericks. So Luca versus Lamelo, two of the most you know top players in 2K. Uh, they got Montez Bazelis, who went up to an 85. So he would have been a really good pick as well. Really debated on taking him. Uh, so far, he looks like the better pick. He's up to an 85. Walters kind of stayed stagnant, which sucked because I thought he was going to develop like crazy after that year one. But Fox is here in Dallas. So uh, Fox and Ka Luca. So it's no longer Kyrie Irving and Luca. It's Fox and Luca. Here goes nothing. Game one, one to zero. Game two, they even it up. Yeah, we're going to have a tough one in front of us. But if we take the three to one lead, which we do, and we win a championship. Okay, we beat the Mavericks. It was pretty, pretty easy, but we'll take it. So Melo Ball, Finals MVP, beat them in five. Beautiful way to end the video. Jaron Jackson, great addition. Charlotte, I'm telling you, man, they're kind of a young sleeper team. If LaMelo Ball can figure out his ankle problems, Brandon Miller was a great pick. A lot of people judged him for it, of course, but it ended up working out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, enjoy uh, all-star, you know, things tonight. It should be a lot of fun, hopefully. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.